While this is a Photoshop tutorial, we're actually going to start inside of Photos for Mac OS. That's because I want to pull out the actual image here that contains the depth map. If you shoot on an iPhone, you have the ability to use portrait mode. This gives you some flexibility to actually capture depth of field information, which is pretty cool. This will allow you to go in and grab information and use the sensor on the camera for depth. Now, what's important here is you can choose these different images and get them into your system, but you have to export these in a particular way. Same thing if you're on your mobile device, you can share these, but you have to share the unmodified originals and include all the data. Now, what you do is choose File Export. And again, it's the unmodified originals. We want to get to the actual HEIC file, which is the high efficiency image codec. That's cool. Let's go ahead and export these. And we'll target a location. I'll just make a folder here called depth and save those. Now, what it does is it writes out some extra information. Now, what it did is it wrote out some extra information. You see 21 files for those seven. That's because you have the HEIC file plus the XMP sidecar and some extra information here about how the file was developed and its settings. What we can do now is go to Photoshop and force these to open, but it's a little tricky. What I suggest here is you actually go to Bridge. Now, this is going to sound strange, but this gives you the flexibility to force files to open into Adobe Camera Raw. This is going to give you the ability to not use Camera Raw as a filter, but more non-destructively. So just navigate to the folder of images. Select the image files. And then right click and choose Open in Camera Raw. Now, these aren't actually raw files, but there is information here that we can work with. For example, if we go here into the masking tool, you'll see that we have depth range. This is something that you might not have realized was there because you have to bring these in in the HEIC format to see it. Now, if you're shooting on an Android phone and it has this ability for depth, it might be in the DNG file. But on the iPhone, this portrait mode is only available when shooting HEIC. This allows me to choose this and define the depth. Choose to see the depth map and then start to adjust. Notice here how I can really refine this and target the selection. That's very cool there. I've been able to choose the flower. I like that and that created a new mask. Now, that's going to work nicely for me and I could choose to see the overlay and we've got everything but the flower selected. So now I could just dial down that background to pull that back. If I flip this here and I say that I want to duplicate the mask, we can rename that one and we'll call it flower and actually just invert it. Choose the depth map and just flip it the X key. Now we can really finesse that there and take advantage of things like texture and clarity to really bring that flower to life. And you just see how it just adds so much there by targeting it to just the flower and not the background. If I choose the background object here, let's rename that. And not only am I going to pull that down, but I want to recover the highlights a little bit more and add some negative texture and clarity. That's going to de-emphasize the background, pulling me to the foreground. And that's really quite powerful how we are able to use the depth to isolate things. Now, let's choose another image. And again, we'll go to the depth map. We're going to create a new mask here using depth range. And just take a look at what's going on and you can refine this. So there's the depth range for this particular image. And I'll click. Notice how it started to make a choice. So that's pretty cool. And we can finesse that. By dragging here, I can control the foreground versus the background. And you can see the little chunks of data 
where it spikes. This is really cool and works nicely. If you want to see the depth map, you can even look at it a bit more and really understand what you're choosing. Now, that did an amazing job of selecting the foreground. Now, let's adjust. We'll come back in here, choose the mask, and just start to refine. Little exposure adjustment. And I'm going to uncheck the option here to see the depth map. Let's warm up the foreground, bringing out the sunlight for the object and adding some texture and clarity for selective contrast. Just look at how that transforms the light on the foam there and brings out the texture of the wood. Again, with any of these masks, always consider duplication. So we'll call this foreground and then simply duplicate it. And we can rename that background. Once you've done so, it's super simple to invert any mask. Now, when you look at that, you can see what's going on, but don't just go with a pure background here. Remember, you can add or subtract. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient. This will make it super simple to create a little bit more of directionality matching that window light. And so what I want to see is a bit of fall off. So as the light comes through the window, it's going to fall off as it moves across that background. That works out nicely. Now, as we adjust, you can see the transformation. For example, bringing out the light coming through the window, but not going quite so far into the scene, so it has more of a transition. And again, let's just warm that light as it comes through the window there, and you see that that just really transforms and lets us indicate a light source from this window that was just out of the frame. That's very cool. While we're at it, I'm going to take the clarity and texture down a little bit so it doesn't add too much detail to the background. And that's just great. If we toggle that on and off, you can see how it's warming that background and de-emphasizing it. Now, if you have hot spots like we do here, problem areas, you could add a spot mask for those. I'm just going to create a new mask and say, make a mask based on luminance range. Choose that hot spot, and you see that it targets it. Now we can finesse what's going to be chosen. In this case, we've done a nice job of really getting just the target areas. And we got the bright spots there where it's a little too bright. I like that. And we can just dial that down. And look how it's a nice little hot spot removal just on that area where we had a blown highlight and a little too much highlight on the side of the glass, which is quite cool. Now I'm just going to come back to the global and while we're at it, let's get a little bit creative. We'll come into the profiles here and just take a look. And remember, there's all sorts of options. I'm just going to take a look at some of these nice artistic ones here to give it a quick feeling. And then using a single slider, we can dial in that color grade just to lean into that a little bit more. And these are super fast and simple as ways to emphasize an image. Now, these work great. And remember, these depth maps can be combined. So for example, here, I'm shooting a reflection, which you would think would totally confuse it, but it can actually handle it. So let's start with the depth range and click on me as the subject. And it did a pretty good job of choosing me and these objects here. Now I can play with that. And if I look at the depth range, it's so easy to see what's happening. This just lets me dial that in and really finesse, making sure I got the phone in my hands and just a hint of the background. And by playing with this, you can just totally dial in what is chosen and what is not chosen, which is cool. Now we can uncheck that and I can really finesse this. Bring myself back out a little bit by pulling down the exposure and adding a little bit of texture to pop and some sharpness to just the portrait area. That worked out well. Now let's take that mask and duplicate it. And we're going to call this midground. ground. 
come right to the depth range and select it. And it's super easy to refine. So looking at that depth range there, I'm just going to see the depth range map and move this a little. Pulling it off of me and moving it into the background area a bit. And look, it's so simple to switch that from a foreground mask to a midground mask. And we could just dial that in. So now the architecture behind me is targeted, which is cool. We'll unshow the depth mask and we can control that area, recovering the reflection a little bit more and just adjusting the color temperature of it. I like it. And let's go once more and select just the sky, which is clearly blown out here in this phone photo. It's going to target it very nicely and we can recover the sky and lean into the color craziness here just warming or cooling it i like that a little warmer here playing with the color now as you look at this the depth mask is amazing it's not as simple as just a select subject because by manipulating it we can go in and see things like the foreground or the midground making for some very targeted adjustments so whether you're doing portrait photography or product photography on an iPhone, using that LiDAR sensor and depth map is really powerful, but you have to open up the actual HEIC file. Otherwise, you can't access that depth map data.